Okay, so we continue our demonstration series here today. Last time I showed you the number one most venomous snake in Africa. Now I will show you the most deadly snake in Africa, which is also not the black mamba. We got it in this box right here. It's actually called the puff adder. Now I will bring the snake out for you and I'll give you a couple seconds. Maybe you're gonna figure out why the snake actually kills and bites more people than any other snake here on the entire continent. Because it might be obvious to some people, it might not be so obvious to some others. So here it comes, the legendary puff adder. Beautiful snake, beautiful colors on this one. And now as you can see, like most viper species, they remain in one position, they don't move much. So they're what we call an ambush predator. So they will sit and wait, sometimes not moving for two weeks, and they think that prey comes to them. So they sit here and then there's like a big rat coming this way, chuck, 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 and then they strike. So hard and fast the prey can get out of the way. And oftentimes you also hold it in your jaws and then the venom takes effect very quickly and the prey succumbs to that. And then they swallow it whole. So oftentimes when we walk to the bush, we encounter mambas or cobras without even knowing it. Because all these snakes, even grass snakes and stuff like that, they go out of our way quick. All snakes are dead, but they sense vibrations on the ground. So as we walk, they know we're there far before we actually see them. This is why like mambas, they go up in a tree or hide underneath something. The same with the cobras, because they obviously don't want to be stepped on, you know. This guy here, the puff adder, is actually quite different. Because this species thinks that we can't see it. So let's say there's like a mongoose coming here. The mongoose will just continue to walk because it's, you know, it doesn't really detect the puff adder because it's camouflaged. Two reasons. First of all, the color. This one right here is like more yellow color. Obviously, it's not the perfect background for it. But now imagine here in Sub-Saharan Africa, like a nice stony, rocky terrain. And this puff adder, like underneath a little bush, you will not be able to see the snake. So any predator, oftentimes they don't even see the snake. They also got keel snakes, number two. So they don't reflect the sunlight. This is why it's very hard to spot one of these in the natural environment. And this is why they think they're safe. So when we walk through their territory, they don't get out of our way. But they sit and remain in the same position like that for a long time as an ambush predator. So people assume that the puff adder is like a landmine, right? So when you walk, they don't get out of your way. In fact, they will just sit there. So you walk, boom, come close, then they strike and bite you. Or some people say that you might step on them. This is how you will get bitten. Since this right here is like a demonstration series, I will show you how the snake strikes when you come close to it and when you might even step on one. So as I said, all snakes are deaf. They can't hear, but they sense vibrations on the ground. The puff adder does not even have what we call like heat sensing pits. They don't have that. So I can use my foot to walk. Obviously I'm not going to do this because you can see I'm wearing boots. Even though I'm wearing boots, I'm not safe from the snake because they have front hinged fangs, super large fangs. They can go up to about three centimeters in length and they go through my boots like a hot knife through butter. No problem at all. So even though I'm wearing boots, I'm not safe. Snake can bite through easy, no problem at all. So I will use this metal stick. Snake doesn't know it's metal. Could be a lack of an impala, could be a lack of a rhino or even my own foot here. So I walk to Kruger National Park, for example, on like a safari walking tour. And I come close to the puff adder here. Come on. Come on. Okay, it doesn't strike. Maybe I was just lucky. Let's see what happens if I walk past by it again. Like a second time now. It's quite unlikely to walk past by the same snake twice. Now, uh, where is it at? Oh, look, it's actually going out of my way. You see that? Now it's a little bit afraid. It gives away its camouflage and tries to get out of the way because, in fact, it doesn't want to be stepped on. And even if I walk back now a third time, you can see it will continue to walk away and it's not striking. Now let's get it back into frame here before it disappears. Right there. Now let's see what happens if you actually step on it. Of course, I will not put big pressure on the snake, but just so you see the reaction. Mid-body doesn't strike. Tail doesn't strike. Mid-body again, still continues to get away from me. Head 
Still doesn't strike. The body again doesn't strike. So the puff adder is not a landmine. They do not cruise around trying to bite us and they're not waiting for us to come close to them so they bite. Why would they? We don't smell like prey, right? And because we don't smell like prey, the snake obviously doesn't want to waste its venom. Because its venom is very precious. They use it, first of all, for killing prey and immobilizing it. And second of all, they use it for digestion. So the prey will actually be digested just by the venom. So it's much easier for the snake to digest the entire um, prey. And this is why only at third place they actually use the venom as a defense. But as you see, the puff adder is actually a very relaxed species. People say they're aggressive. No, they're never aggressive. No snake ever is aggressive. They're only defensive. So how come the snake is now biting more people than any other snake? And the reason is actually quite ugly. Because people, they find them, for example, in their backyards. Or they just walk somewhere and they see a puff adder. Doesn't get out of the way. Doesn't move. It seems fat and lazy. So what some people do is they take hot water and I pour it on the snake in order to kill it. And then of course the snake will defend itself to its maximum. But that's of course not the only way how people get bitten. Sometimes they think the snake is fat lazy, they try to neck it behind the head or pick it up and that is when they will get bitten. Also when you neck it behind the head, even professionals get bitten because the fangs are so long they can even go underneath the, um, the lower jaw through it, the, the skin of the snake into your finger. So this snake right here, as long as you leave it alone, it will leave you alone. And we have stories actually from anti-poaching patrols and stuff like that. They walk through the bush, they step on something soft, and then they turn around and they see there was a puff adder or any other snake and they didn't even bite it. So the puff adder is not a landmine. It's not an aggressive snake waiting for us to come by. In fact, it will only bite you when you try to pick him up or neck him behind the head. And as I said, this snake right here, some people might say it's a fat, lazy snake, but it's not. What you're looking at right here is actually the number one fastest striking snake on the entire planet. This guy here can strike within 0.25 seconds. That means lunging forward, getting the fangs in, envenomating, and going back to a starting position in a quarter of a second. So if it wants to, it can basically strike up to four times in one second. And if that one here bites you, its venom is called a cytotoxic venom. So it's like cell destroying. So actually we have about two to four days until death sets in from this snake. So obviously it becomes like a problem in rural areas where people don't have medical attention. They go to witch doctor or something like that. That is of course quite problematic. But usually if we get bitten here, we have like the next hospital an hour drive from here. Um, the snake would not necessarily kill us. So the reason also why the snake is killing more people than any other is because of very bad medical attention in rural parts of, of Africa. And in fact, this one right here is one of the widest distribution ranges of any snake in Africa that can be found almost everywhere. Only like in parts of Northern Africa, um, there are no records of pop adders. So even if you go to the hospital and you survive, oftentimes you might as well just get your arm amputated or your leg because of the destruction of your tissue. So this snake would bite me, it would be extremely painful, like really painful. People actually can die from the shock just because of the pain itself. And then they also die because of secondary bacteria infection because the venom will actually destroy all the tissue, including the bones. And um, obviously a great place for bacteria to come in, kill the person, or also they die of shock because they start to see their own flesh falling off and um, they start to see their own bones. So even if you do survive, oftentimes people lose like a finger or a hand or even a whole arm or leg from a bite from the snake. And also interesting about the puff adder is that it actually gives birth to live young. So obviously it's not quite the same like with us humans or any other mammal, but it's quite similar. So they don't lay eggs, and they give birth to live young. And the biggest recorded puff adder was actually from Kenya and it gave birth to 157 baby puff adders in one session. Can you believe that? It's crazy. So that is the legendary puff adder. So as I said, they don't bite when you step on them. Just leave them alone. Don't take hot water because then the snake will defend itself to its maximum. The same when you try to neck him behind the head or pick him up and wiggle him by the tail. That's, no, that's never a good idea with any snake. As I said, snakes are defensive, not aggressive. 
perfect specimen right here of the pop edda. Beautiful specimen. So now we'll just put it back nicely. And now we can like take one last look at the head, which is also beautiful. So they have those keeled scales on their head. Very small scales, very typical for the vipers, of course. And like a cat eye, which is perfect for night vision. And they use that for um, controlling the amount of light that goes into the eyes. Of course, they can also see during the day. But that cat eye is perfect when it comes to night vision because they can control the amount of light that's coming into their eye much better so they get much better information, visual information during nighttime. And that right here is one of the most beautiful specimens that I think you will ever see because of its gorgeous color. It's like a golden yellow color. Beautiful one right here. The pop that up. And of course they can go much bigger than this. In fact they can grow about like 1 meter 20. The biggest one was about like 1 meter 80 in length. That one here reckons about maybe 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters, so still quite a small one, actually. Beautiful one, the puff adder. Another snake that people like to scare you with, kills more people than any other snake. It's a landmine, it's not at all. If you walk to Kruger National Park, you're safe. The puff adder, beautiful.